Uh, welcome back. Uh, last Saturday, I put in a video of the spinal cord lesion, and it was a mass which was supposed, which we discussed is intramedullary tumor at the level of about C5 to C6. Six. Now, uh, MRI scan, of course, revealed it was going little down to C6, C7, and I also promised you that as discussed earlier also by my friend Dr. Rakesh Dua who is a neurosurgeon in the Fortis Hospital, Shalimar Bagh, uh, he discussed the surgical management of hydrocephalus. Now today I took some time from him, from his busy schedule and I thought that uh, this should be discussed in little detail about the investigations and treatment not only of the tuberculoma but what could be the other differential diagnosis. So that is how I am here and I now introduce and pass on my mic to the Dr. Dua who would be discussing that what all it could be. Uh, of course, uh, this child uh, uh, had a tuberculoma. Of course, the further it will be discussed by Dr. Dua. Uh, the child had conglomerate lymph nodes also which was more supportive of a tuberculosis. And uh, luck would have it. Lucky for the child, we have started this child on uh, treatment along with steroids and the child has done wonderfully well. But now I pass on the mic to Dr. Dua. Dr. Dua, please. Good evening again. Uh, I again thank Dr. Sunil Gumbar for making me part of this uh, presentation. Uh, this child, uh, you have already seen the first video where uh, Dr. Gumbar has clinically made it an extra dural pathology at the level of uh, above C5. So uh, once you find this type of uh, presentation, the investigation of choice is MRI. So we got the MRI done. MRI showed an enhancing lesion at C6-7 level with surrounding edema. It is an intramedullary lesion. So in a child, whenever we investigate this type of, uh, we find some spinal pathology, it can be either uh, compressive and non-compressive. We divide into two and this uh, found to be a compressive lesion. And once we find compressive lesion, it can be an extradural pathology or it can be intradural. In intradural, it can be intradural extramedullary or it intramedullary. So uh, extradural tumors can be uh, primary or secondary uh, and uh, but child is just 15 years of age right so eight years. Eight years. only eight years so eight years of child usually you don't find any metastatic lesions they are very rare so uh, primary pathologies can be bony tumors primary pathologies can be infective pathologies then uh, we have intradural uh, extramedullary tumor the most common intramedullary extra uh, intra dural extramedullary tumors, they are uh, either neurofibromas or meningiomas. And intramedullary tumors can be ependymomas, astrocytomas. In children, we can find uh, neuro neurogenic cysts, then dermoids, epidermoids, and in adults, we can find hemangioblastomas. But in this patient, so as I told you, the investigation of choice is MRI. MRI, we have found this lesion. There is a central hypodensity with the peripheral enhancement with edema. So, and uh, another important finding was there were conglomerate lymph nodes in the pretracheal and paratracheal region. So, considering that, uh, and the first possibility was put as intramedullary tuberculomas. As far as tuberculomas, spinal tuberculomas are concerned, Craniospinal tuberculomas, they constitute only about say 0.5 to 2 percent of the extrapulmonary tuberculomas. In this patient, uh, and out of these, so what are the various uh, presentations in tuberculomas? Or you can say we call it as a pot spine or, or tubercular spine. First and the most common is usually bony lesions. Bony lesion means they are paradiscal. So there will be involvement of the disc space. So th this differentiates from a metastatic lesion or a primary uh, lesion of the bones that usually they are in the body, but tuberculosis is a paradiscal lesion. 
then it can have some extradural collections which can compress the spinal cord and the patient can present with pain and later on worsening uh, neurological deficit like paraparesis. Most common because of the blood supply, it involves the dorsal region. Second is cervical region and third part is the lumbosacral region. So first presentation is like this. Second is intramedullary. Intramedullary, otherwise they are very rare tumors. Intramedullary you can say uh, around one in one lakh type of the tubercular patient and one in 1000 of the overall spinal tuberculosis. So to proceed further, the presentation of uh, any spinal patient of tuberculosis is pain, then numbness, weakness, bladder ball involvement, depending on the stage of the disease. MRI wise, initially, there is because of the lesion there is extensive edema and later on there is caseation so what we find in the center there is a hypodensity and there is peripheral ring enhancement so th this type of lesions once we find these type of the lesions on MRI along with the lymph nodes uh, and uh, Dr. Goombar uh, has started uh, anti tubercular drugs along with the steroids and patient is responding well uh, and uh, Next, anything else we can do is to investigate further if one, we have to get an MRI brain. Sometimes, most of the time rather, we can have lesions in the brain also once we find a lesion in the spine. Secondly, we have to get the whole spine screening also along with that so that if there are any skip lesions that we can detect on time. Uh, management is, yes, first line is medical management which we have started the indications of surgery in this type of the patients one patient is having severe neurological deficit secondly patient is not responding to our uh, medical management that is patient is going our patient is having paradoxical response third patient has unstable spine in intramedullary lesion, we don't find any unstability because it is in the spinal cord. If patient has an unstable spine in any tubercular lesion, we have to fix it and decompress it. And secondly, if diagnosis is in doubt, once diagnosis is in doubt, we have to get a tissue diagnosis so that we can confirm our diagnosis. Uh, anything else uh, we can discuss? Uh, well, I, I just wanted to ask. Uh, uh, you in your such a vast practice you as i discussed with you mm -hmm. you did say that uh, i you do see uh, in once in seven months or so one in uh, yes well, well uh, i just wanted to ask uh, mm -hmm. uh, supposing they are not responding to uh, your first line treatment uh, because nowadays there is a lot of mdr tuberculosis yes. so any experience with the uh, second line drugs or uh, surgery if they are not responding to first line drugs so usually uh, once we find uh, i find large lesions so because this is not related to anti uh, sorry intramedullary tuberculosis otherwise also in a pod spine case where we find large lesions large swas abscess large anti uh, uh, the paravertebral or prevertebral collections we start the second line for the first 8 to 12 weeks okay because otherwise, uh, ATT for spinal tuberculosis, we give any time between 12 to 18 months. But that is what I wanted because yeah. one should must understand in spinal tuberculosis, even now, even after the start of the DOTS strategy, what I have realized that the neurosurgeons or orthopedic surgeons still continue yes. to give uh, treatment for 12 to 18 months, yes. even uh, the, the anti-tubercular therapy. Thank you. Thank you very much.